When searching for a topic to research and present, we soon found that there was an aspect of Latin American popular culture that we noticed was incredibly underrepresented in academia, that being drag. There's a lack of academic research on drag in Mexico as well as Latin America as a whole. The three articles that we were able to find about drag in Latin America were very specific. For instance, one focused on the view of RuPaul's drag race of university students in Monterrey, one focused specifically on drag cabaret in Mexico, and the other was focused on the interconnectedness of Bolero in Puerto with gender and drag. Though these are all important to the equation of defining what is Latin American drag, what we decided to do was conduct a bit of our own research into the topic by doing an interview with Travela Davis, a drag queen from Querétaro, Mexico, who has been doing drag for approximately three years. For our first section, what is popular culture? And what is drag? Part of what we hope to accomplish in this project is to prove that drag is a part of Latin American popular culture. But first, what even is popular culture? Even if we take the description section, um, this working definition of popular culture from the website, um, the culture of everyday life, both rural and urban, issues of identity, popular memory, resistance, negotiation, as expressed through ritual, crafts, the body, social movements, film, music, and literature. Then, there is a space to try and place drag into this framework. The other important theme to define is, what is drag? Essentially, from being present in the queer community and from reading the limited academic library on this topic, we can comfortably say, even though it may be simple, that drag is the performance of gender. The first point we want to touch on is the role of the drag queen in Mexico. This is a theme that is non-existent in academia, therefore we included it as an interview question. Travela's perspective on this is that it is the responsibility of the drag queen or king to train the Mexican public into embarrassing new ideas or becoming more comfortable with the performance of gender, especially in the street. There is this idea that drag being revolutionary in regard to the male chauvinism that Mexico is plagued by. As we will talk about the consequences of machismo and male chauvinism in the next section, we note that what the drag queen looks to do is to disrupt those norms and have the Mexican public question that part of the culture, the binary. We also wanted to know what makes drag in Mexico different and special to other regions. Travela mentioned that many of the drag performances in Mexico go to a class to learn the basics of the art that is generally held by respected members of Mexico's queer community, which is unique to just Mexico. Another aspect that Travela notes is that drag in Mexico is based in the passion for the art, which is different to Western countries, where there is a potential for fame and fortune, because much of it has been incorporated into the mainstream, for instance, the queens of RuPaul's Drag Race, becoming millionaires after their show's airing. This fame and fortune is extremely rare in Mexico and is not the goal for many of the performers. Though the country has their own spin-off of the American reality show, La Masraga, Travela mentions that the queens go on the show based off of passion for the art and not to achieve the glory. Mexico tiene algo que, que yo no he visto en ninguna otra parte y que es las ganas de, de querer hacer de querer hacer siempre y estamos rodeados de muchos concursos creo que todas las dragas y todos los drags que, que crecemos aquí en México lo hacemos a partir de concursos y es algo que no, no veo en todos lados es algo que, que, no, que no, 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 no encuentro en todos lados porque nosotros lo hacemos por, por pasión en México todavía aún se hace por pasión comparado con otros con otros países, como por ejemplo España, que se hace por, por el foco y por la fama que les van a dar en el concurso que se llama Las Gran Canarias, o por Estados Unidos, que es por la fama que pueden obtener al llegar a RuPaul. Entonces, en México todavía no tenemos como algo que nos intente... Bueno, ya existe algo que nos puede llevar a la fama, pero aún no lo hacemos como por eso, aún todavía lo hacemos por pasión. Entonces siento que eso nos caracteriza mucho, que somos competitivos en México y somos apasionados. As mentioned earlier, one of the articles we came across is Reception of Queer Content and Stereotypes Among Young People in Monterrey, Mexico. 
RuPaul's Drag Race. This study looked at 15 university students from Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico, who had never watched RuPaul's Drag Race before. Um, and so that the researchers had a better understanding of the impacts of the perception of queerness and drag in Mexico and the consequences of male chauvinism. The findings of this article are what really show the perception of the public about drag. They found that the five heterosexual women and five heterosexual men who watched the show found more compassion for the queer experience and drag as an art form. Whereas the five gay men who had never watched the show previously felt a lack of connection to the show, the queer content, and the contestants. The researchers decided that the five gay men were so groomed by machismo in Mexico that they were unable to connect with the show, saying that it pushed stereotypes of the community and that not all gay men are like this, quote. Travella also commented on this within the interview, saying that these findings did not shock her at all. We also wanted to know what influences that are uniquely Mexican to drag from Mexico. The reality show La Mastraga prides itself on focusing on topics that are uniquely Mexican. For example, having a week completely dedicated to the pre-Hispanic influences of the drag kings and queens. For instance, one of Travela's influences is the golden age of Mexican cinema and the fichera, the fichera being Mexican sexual comedies. Mexican drag also takes influence from other aspects of Mexican culture. For instance, La Buchona, which is more prevalent in the North. However, there is not enough space in this project to explain the importance of the Buchona in more detail. Also, the Mexican drag is very rooted in its own popular culture, connecting itself with the celebrations of Dia de los Muertos and Mexican cuisine. Lastly, it is important to mention what drag is not, especially in a Mexican context. As Travellis Davis had said, and many drag performers in the world, is that drag is not trans, even if there happens to be a decent amount of overlap, and that drag has its roots in trans people. It would also be disrespectful to not briefly comment on Mexico's third gender in Oaxaca, the Muche. A brief introduction of the concept of Muche is that they are individuals who were born as cis men dress in colorful traditional female Zapotec attire, assume feminine roles, and play an important part in the traditional velas or community festivals. A Mexican third gender principally found in Zapotec cultures of Oaxaca. To define what drag in Mexico is, it is also important to understand what it isn't and how Muche may have an impact on Mexico's drag culture though we have not found any documentation to suggest that it does influence. However, in the seventh episode of the third season of La Mastraga, the inevitable winner of the season, Avias Ku, represented the Muche in the category La Más Bella Señorita México, drawing inspiration from the traditional third gender. In addition to exploring the different aspects of drag and drag culture in Latin America, an important element that should be noted is that of excess and consumerism. This spectacle requires so many things such as specific gestures, behaviors, and material objects that are all essential to the performance. Scholar David Tenorio quotes Verda Taylor and Leila J. Rupp when stating that transgenderism, same-sex sexuality, and theatrical performance are central to the personal identities of drag queens who use drag to forge personal and collective identities that are their own complex genders. Argued as a form of resistance against traditional societal norms, this level of cultural consumerism in relation to capitalism and materiality is crucial in drag, though also present in the queer community as a whole. Being a key factor in these communities and spaces, it's essential to the popular culture of drag. All in all, as we have mentioned many times during this presentation, there needs to be more research in this area of Latin American drag. Our recommendation is to look at it from several angles and from different faculties of study, so that there is a greater understanding on what drag is in general, as well as what it represents in Latin America. We hope that our observations of drag culture in Mexico, in conjunction with an understanding of popular culture, adds to the conversation and that it inspires others to give queerness a representation it deserves in academic thought.